Okay, so now that I have my blocking sketch for where my type will go with my imagery, I know the, the physical format of the poster I want, so I know kind of what's contained. I might choose for my type to break the border. All of that can be figured out in the blocking sketch, and it at least gets you started. I have two different approaches to type. One is that I'm going to be making my own custom type vector shapes, just like they were a logo in and of themselves, which includes the drop underneath. So I'm going to just take a little screen grab of my composited sketch for each of these. Flip it around. I want each of these to be a different vector. And then I have the type that I'm hoping to fit within the image that says plagued and says anxiety. And maybe it'll just be plague, like plague anxiety, anxiety plague. Yeah, I like that. So I'll lose the D. So maybe I'll make a quick screen grab of that. But not just of the, the words, but the shape they have to fit into. So between these diamonds right there, anxiety and plague. And often arranging elements to go with other elements, that's a design task. And that's in some ways more difficult than just creating something from scratch. So I will move all those screen grabs. into my assignment folder. And you can see that in that assignment folder, I've already downloaded or some, or I've screen grabbed some potential typefaces. There's that one, Tattoo Ink. There's this one, the Tribal Box. And then there are a few others that I downloaded. But where do I download those? What's one option? I can go to the site defont.com. I can search for different types of typefaces that are uploaded to this site for use, for personal use, sometimes for 100% free use. I can put in my words, so I'm gonna get rid of the D because I just want plague and then anxiety. I'll put some spaces in between. And what's funny is when you come back to it, you go into it, you come back to it, uh, you'll find different things that kind of intrigue you. And I'm actually really liking this one. So Tattoo Shop by Decade Type Foundry. Even though it's just a demo, I think I can I can really do something with that. But then I have a few other pages. See if anything grabs me. The first thing I look for, oh, this is quite nice. And this is free for personal use, that's nice. Tattoo Museum. I'm gonna go ahead and when I think that there's a, a really good option, I'm going to click on download. This is, of course, if you have administrative privileges for the device you're using. You can look up script typefaces. You can look up modern typefaces. You can look up uh, sport typefaces, logo typefaces. You'll find ones that are similar to Coca-Cola or similar to Nike. And they're all just going to get us started. This one's pretty nice, but I don't like the script because that's going to be harder to fit. I like the traditional tattoo, but maybe it's just a little bit too standard. Right. All right, so there are really just two I was interested in. So I say give yourself, you know, around three options. To play with. 
And so it's Tattoo Shop. And I'll do the screen grab so I'm actually reminded what the name is. And then how do you install these? Well, they'll come as zip files into the downloads of your computer. So unzip them. Defont is, is a safe provider. I've never had any kind of virus issues or anything with them. Fonts are pretty basic files. They're going to be either OTF files or TTF files, and sometimes they're both. You know, they'll give you both in a folder. These are very direct. Once you get those files, you can save them, especially if you're going to be working on multiple machines. You'll need these files. And then I have other ones like Tattoo Ink. You know, I can unzip that. And that comes as a folder and it has a TTF there. So now how do you install them? Well, you simply take the TTF or the OTF. O OTF is open type font. And you can see that this is missing any special characters and it's missing any lowercase because both the, the uppercase and lowercase are the same. And then it doesn't have any font options. It's all regular. So there's no bold, there's no italic. But I want to use just those straightforward vector shapes. When I install it, it's a little different for a Mac and a PC, but basically it will show you how to install the typeface. On Macs, they install it in a program called the Font Book. But then I have to remember what the name of it was, right? So this was Tattoo Shop. And then I can see it. All right. Then the other one, so that's why I, I get the screen grabs. So I remember what the names are of the ones I want to use. So there's Tattoo Museum is the other one I wanted to use. And then Tattoo Shop. So let's install this one. There we go. Again, this one has, has numbers. So this could be nice to do a first and a second with if I wanted everything to match. But I like the idea of having each of these be kind of a different design. Now, why, why are there more typeface options that are all capitals? Well, capital letters have this beautiful uh, attribute where they, they self-space. So they're made to be very readable because they have the space built around them. Whereas lowercase, sometimes the spacing can get kind of hinky and they're harder to space in a readable way. That's a part of type design as well. So usually when I'm designing type to go with artwork, even if I might sketch it in lowercase, I tend to use uppercase except for design purposes like the second and the first. Even the first is going to be an uppercase. But I like how the second nestles underneath. So I'm going to do that in lowercase. All right. So Tattoo Museum and Tattoo Shop. And I'm already thinking, you know, I'm going to go with Tattoo Museum. It's simpler. It's more readable. It doesn't have all the little points, which are going to get really kind of intricate and maybe be a little too um, fussy and call attention to themselves. So Tattoo Museum already has plenty of kind of character and decoration to it. But there's a problem. So I've installed them onto my computer, which means if I use Adobe Illustrator to make my vector, I can use those fonts that I've installed. But if I'm using freeware that's browser-based, like vector.com and I went ahead and logged into our class account or my class account and I do type tool and I make kind of a big text box right and I select this and change it with the type I want here I have plague anxiety the options they give me they don't give me an option to um, upload my own typeface. Instead, they kind of start with a typeface 
and then I can look and see what other options are available. Now, the good news is if you're limited to using vector, they have a lot of good typeface examples for you to start with. They have all the Google ones like you'll see in, in that I really like in, um, in Google Slides, which are all available as downloads from Google as well that are open typeface designs. But they also have a lot of other ones. And so if I had to pick one from here, I just wanted to get close, right? So Sand Creek is very similar to Tattoo Shop. And what's nice about it is it also has lowercase and uppercase. I think I'll work with the uppercase. And then what I can do is just copy all of that, then click on the text tool, make a new text box, paste it in. So it's up here in layers. <laughs> and I can use a different typeface for that. So let's make sure I have enough room for it. Okay, so for this, let's see. Let's try new rocker. That's eh, a little too edgy. But you can see how you can start to put them side by side. So if you have, you know, two or three options, you'll get a sense of what's going to work best for you. Some are softer edged. I'm going to avoid scripts. I'm going to keep it all uh, uppercase. Oh, I like that. And then, of course, you can change the color so you can see it a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to change everything to black. Now, each typeface also has kind of a slightly different use of spacing and sizing but it can be modified just like a word processor with the different settings. So what I really like on this are the G, the G, the, um, the U, and the X, pretty into the N as well. So I might use the G and the U and the N and the X, and then everything else. I like the Y too. I think I know what I'm going to do. Okay. But the L is really boring, right? The T is really boring. And the E looks more like a 3. So, once you have these, we can change text into auto mode by right-clicking on it. And that way, you don't have to worry about all the spaces and things around them. And then when you're designing your text, you can put spaces in between. You can change certain typefaces, right? So that's Sand Creek. So I know I want to change the L. And so basically, this is kind of a, a more involved way. If I right click, I can duplicate the whole thing. And basically I'm going to, in order to swap between different typefaces, I'm going to isolate just certain letters. So I can duplicate this. Come on. By right-clicking, I'm going to change text to auto mode, so I don't have to worry about all that extra space. I'm going to duplicate it. I'll keep it a different color for now, just so it's easy to tell. And I know I want 